It is mailbag time, and clearly I'm really excited because look who's sitting next to me. Hey, guys. It's Sinead. She's back. Hey, so, here. yeah, it's uh, it's me, Perry, Sinead, and Dennis, the OG food crew yes. of mailbag. Food and crew. It's a reunion. Yeah. It is a, it is a reunion. I I'm immediately so hungry. Immediately. Yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> so, of course, the food crew comes back. We have to talk about what? We have to talk about food, obviously, yeah. Yeah. and it's the the perfect weekend because I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. But we're going to continue celebrate feasting and Thanksgiving and family and our love of food because that's what this episode of Mailbag is about. It's only food related questions, a whole variety of them <laughs> that I'm very excited to pose to this one right here. Before we jump into the questions, though, I must remind you that we take these questions from four different places: Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, email, mailback at Collider.com. And on top of that, this isn't only a video show, it is a podcast show as well. It's on the Collider Movie Talk feed, so tell everybody you know about that. All right, are we ready to do this? Let's do it. All I'm right, excited. question number one excited. today. These are all Twitter questions today, by the way. Comes from John Caro 4 who writes, if you were to invite two or three movie characters for your familial Thanksgiving feast, who would you invite? Dennis, who are you inviting? Uh, I would start off with Tony Stark because he's got a lot of money. Plus, he's a great conversationalist. Mm -hmm. He's very charming. He would make the, the, the discussion very lively. And he'd bring lots of, like, either really great food or really good gifts for yeah. everyone. Yeah, um, that makes sense. And then the other one is, he, I, I'm cheating here because he's... He was in movies, but he's more known as a uh, t TV character as John Luke Picard, Patrick Stewart. I feel like he's just has this grandfatherly wisdom mm, to him yeah. that he would come and talk to you and he'd, he'd probably have some great stories, even as that character, John Luke Picard. And, uh, but yeah, so those are the two that I, that I would invite. I'd like to attend your family Thanksgiving. Please. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. <laughs> also, do you get gifts on Thanksgiving? Because if that's the case, I need to come to no, your place. No, but I figure it's Tony Stark. That's he's right. coming over. He's bringing gifts anyways. That's true. that's true. I'm getting gifts on Thanksgiving this Are year. Are you? Because yeah. it's my birthday. Oh, okay. I'm okay. so excited. That's, that's still cheating. <laughs> I'm really <laughs> conflicted, though, because I do like thanks. I actually don't love all Thanksgiving food, but normally I'm like, give me a big pile of mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. But I'm also like, it's my birthday, and I like to eat. A full cake. A dinner. full cake? Yeah. Like you yourself I, eat a full yeah, cake. Yeah, also, how are you going to get like, absolutely no self control when it comes to sweets? It's either the whole cake or no cake at all. Wow. It's a problem. <laughs> It sounds like a good problem to have. Yeah, I don't think it's all that bad. It's only once a year. <laughs> yeah. Right? With yeah. no transition whatsoever. Who is coming to your Thanksgiving? All right. So, um, I, I similarly, similarly, <laughs> To Dennis, I felt like I needed somebody more like entertainment-y mm -hmm. and then I needed somebody like wisdom-y, right? <laughs> smart. Wisdom-y, mm, smart. So I went with Thor because he drinks, he eats really well. So he likes to drink, he likes to eat. So we're already going to get along mm -hmm. uh, like really well. And also he's hilarious. And I also kind of think that seeing somebody so big and so like out of their element at a South African Thanksgiving would be <laughs> hysterical. And then my second person would be um, Dumbledore <laughs> because Other. of the wisdom yeah. aspect of it. And also I just feel like it'd be good to go between somebody like Thor who's like sheer entertainment and really hilarious and would like down beers with me. And then Dumbledore who would provide like very good conversation and like I don't know, maybe I could like lay on his beard after <laughs> I get done eating. I also feel like he could just like with a flick of a wand make any food you want. That's also very true and I didn't even think about that. <laughs> That's genius. Mm -hmm. um, mine are a little uh, offbeat compared to those. For my entertainment person, I'm going with Ian Malcolm from Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. I could just kind of picture the two of us sitting at the table. It's after you're, you're done and you're waiting for your dessert and he's just like dropping a water drop on my hand and we're seeing which way it falls. And then because I need someone to clean up after me. I'm yeah. going with Mo from Wally. Oh, that's you remember, good. You remember Mo that he meets on, on the ship mm -hmm. and, uh -huh. and Mo cleans up after him? That's so, so smart, actually. <laughs> yeah, well, my, my family is uh, super neat and clean, and we think about those things whenever other people come over for the holidays yeah. and clean up after. Oh, that's the worst part. Like, yeah, it's absolutely it really the is. worst part because you're really so is. full, and it's just like you don't even want to look at any more food, let alone food on plates. The dogs are our living, breathing Moe's because yeah. whenever any food drops on the floor, they've got it in a heartbeat. 
amazing. <laughs> That's actually really smart. I respect your answers. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, you want to read the yes. next one, Dennis? Next question we've got uh, from Gregory Dopp. He writes, holy, that looks like an awesome Collider holy. mail bag. <laughs> what is the most food and variety of food you have ever consumed at a picture show? What is the absolute best food you wish they had served or sold at a theater? And what of donuts? <laughs> What? <laughs> I like this question. Um, I feel like I kind of revealed my answer a little bit in talking about the last question, but the most food I've ever consumed during a single movie is for a while when I was going to South by Southwest, what I would do is I would take a flight that left Austin and went back to New York at like five in the morning. And then I would go to a midnight screening at the draft house. So the movie would end and then right. I would have to go to the airport. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is I would just have a whole bunch of beers. And then after that, I would watch a movie and drink one of their milkshakes, which I mean, like it is a milkshake and I would eat the entire cookie sampler. And then by the time I got to the airport, I would just be in food and beer coma that's amazing yeah that's a that's a thing that you probably shouldn't advise anyone to do but it worked for me for a couple of years i like it i i like that a lot um you know it's funny is like i really don't eat a lot of food at the theater because i feel like there's something about going to the movies like no matter what like you will be nauseous afterwards <laughs> like i don't know what it is i don't know why but i can't even eat that much popcorn anymore and i don't know if it's because i abused it when i was like a teenager but i think the most food i've ever eaten is like when i've actually gone for like food options mm -hmm. and it was actually pretty recently but i got like curly fries and like a hot pretzel and then i just wanted to die afterwards i was like why did i do this but i usually always get like usually always get popcorn and i have to like limit myself not to eat it like tell myself not to eat too much of it because i do get super nauseous off of popcorn which makes me really sad but only movie theater popcorn because it's got some weird like it's the smell I don't, what i don't know what it is i don't know if it's like the oil or the grease but like i can make popcorn at home and put like tons of like sugar and mm -hmm. cinnamon on it and i won't get nauseous if i go to the movie theater it's like i am 1000 percent like about to throw up afterwards it's awful you know when I, you have that feeling when you walk into a candle store and you're completely overwhelmed by all yeah. the smells that's how i feel sometimes i really like popcorn but that's how i feel sometimes when i walk into a movie theater where just the smell of the pop yeah. popcorn is too overpowering maybe it's like the combination between eating it and <laughs> smelling it and it's just like seeping into your pores so i feel like you're way better off when you actually eat like real food and when i ate like fries and a hot pretzel then I'm fine. But like the rule for theaters, I think in terms of like the best food they could sell at a theater, it nothing that makes noise. And we've talked about this before. Like I do <laughs> truly believe that they should sell some sort of donut at a theater because they have like those little like Parmesan bites at some now. So I'm like, okay, why don't you just serve like beignets? Mm -hmm. that, that would be bomb. Well, I'm yeah. picturing what's the place in um, City Walk here where it's got like the conveyor belt of donuts, like, you know, the mini donuts. That seems like the oh, perfect thing. Oh, to the, put in a movie yeah, theater. I know yeah. what you're talking about. I just had those yeah. a few weeks ago right like we, like you it's kind of along the same lines but like why the hell are you gonna serve nachos that are like the loudest thing on the face of the earth <laughs> and like if you get nachos first of all what are you doing with your life because you have to wait for the loudest part of the movie to even <laughs> take a bite of said nachos wait, wait. so like i just feel like it's so silly that they have all these loud crunchy foods what is the worst offender is it loud crunchy food or smelly food so that, you know, let's say someone eats a hot dog near you and then all you could smell the entire movie is hot dog breath. Uh, I'd say smelly just because if you time the, the loud food at the right time, <laughs> if you're a considerate person, you know, right. and not like the most like, you know, drama filled, like uh -huh. sad emotional scene, you're like chomping away at your food, yeah. you can get away with it. The smelly food, I mean, like a hot dog, I don't think really would bother me, but if it was something else, it's like when people bring, bring other, their, uh, their own, own food. Foods. Yeah, I've I've <laughs> legit seen somebody. Well, it wasn't at theater, but this is a really quick story. But I was at Medieval Times recently, and this woman had hot sauce in a giant Ziploc bag, like one of those freezer bags. <laughs> and she straight up pulled that bag out. I was like, is, is does this woman have a bag of blood in her purse? Like, what is this? And then I saw her like pouring it on her chicken. I was laughing my butt off because I was like, we're at Medieval Times, so already there's that. Yeah. And then there's this woman with her hot sauce, and she just passed it down to her like 12 person family sitting, and they all just poured from they must this bag. Love Why hot didn't sauce. they just bring the bottle? 
I don't Wouldn't that have been a million times easier because to transport times, news? Because medieval times, the oh, type of people okay. that go to medieval times is not Makes surprising. So they don't have bottles now. back then. Yeah, no, they don't. She was like trying to get into character. She's like, I'm going to put it in a bag. But yeah, um, I don't know. Smelly foods, I think, is probably still worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I uh, forgot the question. Uh, for, for the most oh, variety the mo of her, most, What was the most you consumed, right? Yeah, I think the most is when I went to IPIC once and like, you know, you can have your whole dinner there. And it's, it's like, like a whole like, full Yeah, and it was like an appetizer. Mm -hmm. plus dinner plus popcorn plus candy plus drinks you know what i mean that's just a, that's a lot of stuff it's I mean, kind of like you don't even eat that food on a regular yeah, basis yeah exactly but you know we were at ipic and so ipic is a very nice mm -hmm. and comfortable place and you feel it's it's funny at how discreet the waiters are there because I, I, I thought they would be mm -hmm. like really bothersome and in the way but they really kind of come up to you it's really like so that at the draft house yeah. too yeah and so it doesn't yeah. doesn't bother me and they at don't all. bother like if, if somebody's like ordering something they're bringing something by you know like you have enough space but regardless of that i'm never ever bothered by other people getting mm -hmm. the waiters either yeah. at an ipic it's really nice does actually. the ipic have that thing where like you'll write it during the movie on a piece of paper and you stick a little tab out uh, or do they come up and verbally no. ask you do you I mean, want before anything before the movie they ask you what you want yeah and then they serve it through you throughout the the movie oh, but I see, I see. you can ask for additional stuff okay during it it's just i don't know i thought they would just be more in the way but they're not so. draft house does it kind of like that where they'll take your order before the movie starts but then during the movie you have the option to order whatever you want but you just take it with a little pen and paper mm -hmm. and you write what you want down and then they have a little area where the paper sits in so mm -hmm. it sits up and the waiters just come around and they snatch them oh, up oh that's smart and they bring more food yeah, yeah nice. especially when you need a whole lot of beers because yeah. that's that's half the fun of going to yeah. a draft house i need to go <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what, what food would you add to a concession stand? It's, it's actually, it'd be just a variant of the popcorn is kettle corn. I love kettle oh, corn. I love kettle but corn. But no movie, like there's only, yeah. only like one or two movie theaters I've ever been to that actually serve kettle corn. I don't mm -hmm. know why. Because you always get the regular popcorn there. And then some places have caramel popcorn. And like you see like AMC is doing that gourmet thing where like they have the caramel popcorn and the cheese and you can mix it together like, like Chicago, Chicago style. style. Yeah. Which is good. But I still want just kettle yeah. corn. Yeah, no, I agree. I love kettle corn. They but, used to have like those little powders, remember? Yeah. yeah. And then like that was like a thing. Like everyone was doing that for yeah. a while. Like you have to put your powder on your popcorn <laughs> afterwards. It's like you're so excited about it. And they had a kettle flavor, yeah. but it was trash. Yeah, it's, it's not like, the same. It's not the same. It's and so, actual garbage. I, I don't know what what is it financially or business wise why they don't sell kettle corn. Yeah. They're not enough people like it or just, I don't know. It's I'll be the expensive. odd one out and I'll say I want movie theater acai bowls. Oh, oh my, my god! It's really my favorite thing. I in love the world. acai bowls, so like I could totally. But that is so like that's so messy if you think about is it. Is it? Like you, where do you go? Creation. Uh, yeah, but you get creation. like the Amazon bowl. Of course, that's I get a like, taco bowl. That's my. That's like my order, that's right? So messy. But about like you it. have to see, like you have to get all the right amounts of fruits. It's almost like having the stress of waiting <laughs> for a loud part to chomp on a nacho. Yeah. I want to like see what I'm eating. You know? Yeah. No, I guess that's kind of fair, actually, but. I still want an acai. I mean, you could, I movie. could do like a smoothie, like an acai smoothies. Did I ever tell you the story where at creation, Viola Davis took my choco bowl? No. <laughs> so she, Viola Davis was, was there with her child and I take certain things off of mine and I saw them give my choco bowl to them and they're sitting there eating it. And it's just like, you know, yeah. like I was standing there in the corner and I knew, but it was Viola so what Davis. are you gonna do like excuse me um <laughs> the, that's my acai bowl I, I would never say no. that but you know that the people there probably know me by now and they do and one of them was standing there watching me and he's like hmm and then finally he comes up to me and he goes I just gave her your acai bowl didn't I and I'm like it's totally fine it's that's totally fine so and I waited for funny. another yeah so that's I awesome. feel like we're we're kind of connected mm. me and Viola Davis even though we're not mm. all right next Maybe. question this is one from Eyal Shuk Shakar, Shakar, who writes, what movie around inspires you to go cook something or take out? There's so many good answers for this. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, for me, the, the two movies that make me want to cook is uh, Chef with uh, John mm -hmm. Favreau, mm -hmm. you know, with his whole food truck. And like, he's just always meticulous with it. Uh, the opening sequence to Eat, Drink, Man, Woman. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's uh -uh. like... Uh, this Taiwanese chef and he's cooking all this big elaborate uh, like big feast and that makes me want to cook but there's another one that doesn't make me want to cook but it makes me want to go out not take out but like if you watch Jiro Dreams of Sushi mm -hmm. you just want to go eat 
sushi. <laughs> you just want to go to a restaurant. That's not that's not a takeout meal. Have sushi you been is not cooking a, a lot? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel like you did Blue Apron for a while. Right? I did, and then I stopped. Uh, I may do it again. It's the only the hard part about Blue Apron is that they they only do the like the three meals a week, and I think three is a lot. Is I that think, Tom Brady's thing? Doesn't he have a blue Blue Apron like does line? He? Does he? <laughs> he I has don't know. some sort of like. Chef I'm not capable box. of cooking it, so I wouldn't know. They'll have like celebrities or like special versions. Yeah, he had like versions. a line or something, but I don't know if it was Blue Apron. Like I know, um, uh, why am I? Why am I? Uh, Chrissy Teigen like had yeah. like like a couple like a month worth of. Uh, of Blue Apron recipes, mm -hmm. and I think Master Chef had uh, one as well. So I, I, I just stopped because three times, not cooking three times a week, but th cooking their recipes three times a week was getting a bit much. Because then if you don't cook it, it's like sitting there right. in, in your fridge. You're like, oh my God, I have to cook it. It's like, it's almost like, like work, <laughs> you're like yeah. homework or something like that. So I yeah. actually think two times would would be good for me. But uh, yeah, those are mine. I hope Blue Apron takes those notes. Yeah. <laughs> um, what you got, Sinead? Well, my first, my, the first movie that came to mind was Ratatouille, just oh, yeah. for mm -hmm. cooking, cooking purposes. But then the more I, I thought about it, I was like, the last time that I really truly felt inspired to do something uh, based on a movie was actually Bridesmaids because she bakes throughout it. Huh. And I do love baking, but I'm terrible at it. So I usually like make, I bake out of a box. I always be like, oh yeah, I made this myself, but it's totally out of a box. And they're like, how'd you do it? I'm like, okay, well all you do is like you open the box and you pour the stuff in the bowl and then you add an egg and some oil and then you cook it. And like when I was watching her like bake and like decorate all of her cakes, I was like, oh my gosh, like what an incredible skill to be able to like bake cakes, you know, like to make a really good cake. I always have mad respect for like my mom. And I'm just like, how did you, how did you do this? Like, how did you do this? She's like, you just do it. Like she doesn't have recipes. They just do it. Mm -hmm. And I was totally inspired to like bake. But then I quickly was reminded that like, I don't know how to freaking bake. So like, what am I doing? <laughs> can you cook though? I can cook certain things. Um, I'm getting a lot better at it, but I still like, I'm not the type of person that can cook without a recipe yet. Like my parents, they could be chefs, I swear to God. The way that they cook is unreal. Like they just like throw things in a pot and I'm like, what are you guys doing? It's stressing me out. But like, <laughs> I'd be like, how did you make that? And she'd be like, oh, I have no idea. And I'm like, what? Like how, like, that's not helpful. But yeah, I don't know. I guess, I guess Ratatouille is like a good, it's a stretch though, because mm. I, I could never do that. Uh, bridesmaids, at least I could. I could fake it, you know. I feel like I'll purposely put in or take out for me because yes, <laughs> that's the only cook. option she I have. She cooks eggs, so in you know, a microwave. Yeah, is, that, that, is that how you cook I, eggs? Yeah, she I, does. If you have watched the episode uh -huh. of behind the scenes I did with Christian, you know that I am very capable of cooking eggs in a pan on the stove now. Okay. But yeah, the microwave is just quick and easy. That's mm -hmm. that's I where it comes literally from. Literally, I've never I've never been more disgusted. <laughs> they also have anything I've never, you've I, said. I've, I've never even said. heard of anyone doing that before. I know. That. She, I was have like, what are you talking about? Have you seen the as seen on TV products where it basically I gives you like a little microwave egg cooker no. and you can cook eggs all different sorts? Of, all right. I'm not, I'm not going there again. Okay. But the movie that makes me wish I could cook slash bake is Waitress. Also because in the movie Waitress, it's the way they shoot uh, the making of the pie yeah. is that mm -hmm. it makes you feel like you're part of the recipe and also how all of that is so well woven into her story too. how the pie she's cooking reflects what she's going through mm -hmm. in the moment. I love that also if and when and you should go see Green Book. But when you do see Green Book, that movie's gonna make you hungry too. Oh, okay. really? All right. Yeah, All right. okay. it's Good definitely a movie that uh, that celebrates food a bit. I like <laughs> movies that make me hungry. That's definitely one to put on your list. Good. Good. Yeah. All right. Uh, next one we have from at high point 33 and he or she writes, what is the best and the worst food you like to eat and don't like to eat on Thanksgiving day? And what movie do you like to watch on Thanksgiving day? <laughs> I'm so glad we got to this. Okay. Um, so why I said I don't love all Thanksgiving food is because <laughs> in front, this probably comes from my cake problem, but it's like, like I either want all or nothing, you know? So when I really love something, I gotta eat it all. So for me, that's mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. Mashed potatoes, hands down, my favorite Thanksgiving food ever. If the entire meal could just be mashed potatoes and gravy, I'd be a very happy person. And the thing that I would pluck off the Thanksgiving table and put in the trash is any sort of cranberry sauce. Yeah, I hate cranberry yeah. sauce too. I, yeah, yeah, I just, I don't like it at all. Yeah. yeah, the only thing I hate more than cranberry sauce is turkey. <laughs> and I know that that's oh. like okay. awful, but I'm going on I think I'm at like 14 years now since I've put a piece of turkey into my mouth. I am absolutely disgusted by turkey. I don't know how it started. I know that like 
it was it was maximized when I went to South Africa years ago, and I wa- I was lion mating season at the reserve, and they threw like whole chickens at the lions, and the smell is something I will never forget in my entire oh, life. Wow. So I gave up all poultry actually after I got back from South Africa. I like literally went to go get like a fried chicken sandwich, and I was like. I can't eat this. Huh. But I started eating chicken again a few years after that. But I'm, it's been now, it's probably been almost 15 years since I've eaten turkey. And I, don't, mm. I just can't do it anymore. I can't stand the smell of it. So it's not oh, even wow. like, it's not even like I, I don't even remember and I'm like willing to try it because the second I smell it, I'm like, nope. But I have totally like, undressed a turkey or whatever and like take like i've done that on a thanksgiving before and like literally had a peg like a clothes peg on my nose and i was like oh my god (laughs) um but mashed potatoes is almost my favorite like it almost 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 my favorite my actual favorite thanksgiving food is stuffing Mm -hmm. and i don't understand how people say they don't like stuffing i feel like everybody who says they don't like stuffing is lying because it's stuffing everybody likes stuffing you know i really do think Mm. everybody likes stuffing they just they say that they don't I'm with I'm with you guys about the cranberry. Like I don't get it. I don't know why it's there. I don't eat like turkey. And I don't do the whole thing like every year. Once in a while, I have turkey mm-hmm. on Thanksgiving just because we we don't just have traditional Thanksgiving. But anytime that there's like cranberry, I don't see the match between because I do like turkey and I do like mashed potatoes. I like gravy, all that stuff. I just don't see where the match is where you're supposed to eat it with that food or something i don't know it's always there right at traditional yeah. thanksgiving dinners i don't know who either but i i don't like it somebody like a long long time ago i guess but i don't know because you're right as long as i've been in america it's yeah. been a thing because that was the first time i'd ever been introduced to cranberry sauce yeah and if I you here. and if you have like let's say a thanksgiving or turkey type of sandwich they'll throw cranberry mm-hmm. on there yeah, yeah what is that it's gross i feel yeah. like you could probably get that at ike's yeah. This week or something. Also, like turkey and cranberry and sandwich. Mm. No. <laughs> Part yeah. two of this. What movie would you like to watch on Thanksgiving Day? I would like to watch any movie, but no movie brings the Nemiroff family into the same room together quicker than a horror movie. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like it's it's, it's so just funny. incredible. It's like we'll go from watching the Thanksgiving Day parade to the dog show to like the Hills Have Eyes mm-hmm. or something like that. So that That's might funny. be what we're all watching. I like that. Um, well, I do like watching sports on Thanksgiving Day. So, like, that is a thing. But I feel like movie-wise, I don't know why I, my first gut instinct was Star Wars. And I think it's only because I watched it last year mm-hmm. on Thanksgiving. And I was like, it's tradition. And I was like, wait, <laughs> I don't think that. But I, I do... I do feel like something familiar is the best to watch after you've eaten because that way you don't have to pay too much attention. It's something that you know that you love already. But I think it was Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's Day last year that we watched Star Wars. And it might have been because they had all of the Star Wars on. They were playing them mm-hmm. all, every day. Remember for like three months? And that that's happened the past couple of years. So for some reason... I just associate holidays now with Star Wars, but I think it's because like Stars or HBO or one of them plays them like every single day. You can watch another Star Wars and once you get to the end of where we're at, it just starts over again. Not a bad thing to be marathoning on a day like that. No, it's the best because you can just like sit there and just like enjoy the movie. You already know what's going to happen, but you're still like, ah, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, For me, it's the one I've mentioned before. It's Clue because... That's the that's the movie that my I'm my, I couldn't get my my family like with my cousins would come over and watch Thanksgiving is a bigger deal than because you know we're not religious so for Christmas that's actually just kind of my more my immediate family that gets together and then Thanksgiving is the actual when the whole family in the Bay Area gets together and that's kind of almost like a bigger deal than than hmm. Christmas Christmas yeah. is actually usually either just with my immediate family or going on vacation or something mm-hmm. like that so. Yeah. I get that. Um, I think we've got time for one more. So I'm going to go with a question from Movie Burb, who writes, I recently did an interesting food-related icebreaker that made for great conversation. If there was one food you could pick to swim in, what would it be? We are talking a full pool of your oh we're talking i reversed that we're talking a pool full of your choice it could be a full pool too <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right dennis you're up uh, first i just thought of what was not going to be the messiest mm-hmm. what I'm is so not going to be the I'm grossest not, the only one who went there. not anything too i i picked 
marshmallows, like big fluffy marshmallows. So, you know. How are you going to swim through that, though? I don't know. I feel like I thought about this I, too literally. You know, but I, I, like, thought, I thought more so like they I. would be kind of like, you know, those like those the, those ball pits or whatever, yeah. right? They just be giant yeah. or maybe bigger than normal marshmallows. Have you seen that picture I posted on my Instagram? And it's like I'm literally in a pit of like like fake marshmallows. Oh. And it literally was supposed to be like a marshmallow pit. Oh. But I will tell you right now, it wasn't easy to swim through. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> no. I, I kind of thought about it like that, too. At, fir at first, I'm like, you know, like, what could you picture a pool being filmed with, filled with? And I'm like, oh, like ice cream or something. Right. And then I started to think, but I like peanut butter a lot more. But then I started to think, how am I going to swim through the you peanut butter? You will die. And that's yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah. I was like, I need, if I'm swimming for my survival, <laughs> like, what would be the one thing I need to swim through? And then also I thought, like, your body, like, on it, then that yes. started grossing me out. And then I was like, okay, so like the option was like chocolate, right? Because like you can't really no, see. No, but it's gonna melt. Yeah. I thought about chocolate too. But like if it's like liquid chocolate, like in Willy Wonka, you know, like the chocolate lake. But then I was like, okay, because I can't really see how gross it is because it's always just gonna be like yeah. dirt colored. But then I was like, okay, soda, because like that's that'll clean you. Because <laughs> of all the acid and the bubbles, yeah. it will clean your body. So like that would be smart. But then I was like, but my teeth will get really yellow. <laughs> You got deep on this one. I know. I was like, oh, no. Like, how? what is the answer to this question? I eventually started to think about things that, because, like, your body touches it, like you said, that, like, wouldn't get, like, super gross yeah. and right. not clean and that yeah. you could still eat it. And I started to think about candy corn. Ew. Like, it feels, well, it feels like if you're swimming in a pool of candy corn, you could take the little waxy corn after and, like, go like that, and it's fine and edible. Yeah. And then I'm like, but wait, I don't love candy corn that much. So just, like, screw it all, and I want to swim in a pool of pizza pizza yeah i mean i guess maybe the messier right the harder you'll be able to see how gross it is you know what i'm saying because it just already is messy like spaghetti is always gonna look spaghetti and like yes. meat sauce is always gonna look like spaghetti and meat sauce even if you have like your body all over it <laughs> wait so we gotta at least come up with an answer so dennis what are you what are you locking in marshmallows uh, marshmallows yeah what are you doing Sinead? i think i'll lock in with chocolate chocolate I'm so conflicted, I can't stand it. You're like, it. candy corn, or what was your other one? <laughs> pizza. Pizza. Pizza is so gross. Candy I don't think corn. I could have picked candy a worse option than pizza. like, so boring. I think if you're going chocolate, then I can just swim in a damn pool of ice cream. It's true. Right? Yeah, but like ice cream, I think but of like it's, it's gonna white. But it's going to melt. It's going to melt. No, white, I didn't pick vanilla. I'm picking chocolate. Okay. So it's good. we're still in, the, we're I guess, the same the category. Same thing, yeah. so, so Dennis is probably the only one who's not going to get seriously sick for the yeah. pool he's swimming in. And, and doesn't look like I'm swimming I don't in, know, in a pile of doo, -doo. But if you were swimming for your <laughs> survival, all right, you might wish you were swimming through a pool of something that looks like poop rather than <laughs> swimming to try to breathe under marshmallows. I'm so glad you're all seeing this after yes. you've eaten your Thanksgiving meals, because now we've probably made you nauseous. <laughs> Before we close this out, Sinead, thank you so much oh, for, for doing having this me. with us. I'm so happy you're back at the yes. table. I know. I love it. Um, I love talking about food, and I really appreciate being here to hang out with you guys. I'm surprised you didn't say a pool full of donuts. Um, no, can don't. you tell everyone where to find you on the internet? Um, yes. I'm online at Sinead DeFries and at thatsoshinead.blog. And why not, Dennis? Where does everyone find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at ThinkHero, Instagram, Dennis.TZNG, and uh, hopefully Sinead can come back some other time. Yes. We'll, Let's do. And we'll talk more food. Absolutely. And I'm at Pete Emerald off on Twitter and Instagram. Again, I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday. I hope you're still enjoying time with your families. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Mailbag. As always, like and share it. And don't forget to check back on the channel tomorrow for a brand new episode. See you then. Hey, everybody. Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode. You want to watch more? Then click up here. Or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. If you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.